Hey everybody, hey bookers, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video, welcome back to the final video of, well, final bookish video of 2022. So, so excited to have you over, as always, thank you for choosing me over and over and over again. Still pretty much in the last bits remnants of my flu, but you know how it is. We got to keep working. We got to keep pushing. So, so glad to have you guys here. So, so excited to have you guys here. It's a great time. It's going to be a great time. And if you are looking to get in into reading next year in 2023, this is the book that I, this is the book. This is the book. This is the video that I want you to watch because these are the books that I want you to walk into 2023 saying to yourself, I'm going to get these books. So we're going to get into the video. This is going to be some of my favorite books of the year and some of my worst slash disappointing books of the year. So these are the books that I thought that I would get a lot out of, the disappointing ones, but didn't quite match it up for me. So if you're keen to see the video, let's get into it. First things first. So you guys know that I don't really read a lot of non-fiction even though i'm trying to and 2023 is going to be the year where i read more non-fiction than i do f no no where i read more non-fiction and also the year of the classics for me i'm currently reading a classic novel now but if there's one non-fiction i would love you to pick up in 2023 that i read in 2022 and I love so much it's this one. The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl by Issa Rae. Now this is Issa Rae's memoir and my goodness I listened to the audiobook <coughs> And I don't rate memoirs. I don't rate memoirs. Um, I feel like it's someone's life story. Why should I rate it out of five and all of that? That's just weird. But I listened to this on audio and she was the one narrating it. And my goodness, it's so good. Not only is it her life story, essentially her family life, her relationship with her father, her mother, you know, having a Nigerian father and a Senegalese, is it a Senegalese father or a Senegalese mother? And uh, how, you know, having to navigate that, having to navigate hair at school and navigating being the awkward black girl at school and the awkward uh, uh, girl who's always trying to crack jokes so that you can, you know, to, to get rid of her nervousness and all of that. But it also introduces us to her career and her now husband and how she met him and how she was once a Lyft driver, like an Uber driver. Man, it's so entertaining, but it also puts and sheds a whole lot of light on, you know, just the struggles of black women, but also how we can be formidable in ourselves and just create wonderful lives for ourselves and Issa kind of taught me that and I absolutely loved this. It didn't read like someone who was telling me that oh I grew up here and I went to school here and I did this here. It didn't read like a boring memoir. This read like this could be turned into a, a, a series on TV. Like, honestly. Um, so I really enjoyed this and I implore you to, to, I enjoyed it and I implore you to pick it up. Let's start, actually, let's start with the, I'm going to put them here, yeah, so you don't see which ones they are. Let's start with the disappointing books, the not-so-faves, the ones that I really had hopes for, I had high hopes for, and I was kind of disappointed. Um, and that's fine, you know, we can all be disappointed, it's fine. Another book that I really didn't like, and if you followed if you follow my book content, <laughs> another book that I really didn't get on with and I had so much faith for this book is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. When I picked up this book, I was quite excited to try it. I thought to myself, okay, I, I want to see what the hoopla is all about. I picked up this book around the time that I started really truly following book talk, right? Book talk, like really truly starting to watch the TikTok videos on books. And I'm thinking... Okay, let's try it out. All it became to me was a book following four teenagers. And there's four of them. Four teenagers who are um, related and 
they are from wealthy families and they go to their grandparents island because their grandparents are wealthy and they own an island and they go there for the summer break and they just you know rich people problems you know what i'm saying like white rich people problems where just people have jealousy issues because oh your house is better than mine or this is better than this and it I don't know we are beautiful and privileged we are cracked and broken beautiful and definitely privileged it rang of white privilege it rang of these people are so detached it rang as tone deaf I just couldn't I couldn't I read it and I finished it because it's such a you know a, a tiny book to get through but no um, a book that was a disappointment for me even though I rated it a three and initially after thinking about it a bit I brought it down to a two this is Wahala by Nikki May I had faith in this book I enjoyed certain aspects of this book because it talks about you know black nigerian women who are excelling and doing so well at their lives and we follow their lives and they live in england and we follow their lives just their relationships their relationships with their children they each other one another as friends um family also a little bit of you know wealth and privilege here and there and four friends a few who are quite unlikable for me i really didn't like boo and i really didn't like isabel and it's marketed as a thriller i don't think it's a thriller i think it's more of a mystery i guess um it's marketed as a thriller that just didn't quite hit the mark for me as somebody who reads a lot of thrillers i felt like i was generous by giving it a two a three star so i brought it down to a two star and I enjoyed the relationship that some of them had with one another. I really loved Ronke because I thought she was amazing. But I felt like some of the characters, I think Simi and, and, and Boo, and at certain instances, were so self-absorbed for me. Um, and it was just about them that I really just... I didn't get on with it. I didn't get on with it. Um, but it was, it was fine. Let's just put it that way. It was fine. It was quite a disappointing one. But the most disappointing one was this one. Yo, guys. <laughs> Say a little prayer for me because this book disappointed me. Yo, as you know, I am the biggest fan of Akweke Emezi. I love their work. I love <coughs> their books. I have read Freshwater. I have read, I love their work. I love their books. I have read Freshwater. I have read um, that one over there, The Death of Vivek OG. And I rated both of them five stars. I was so excited to see what they were going to do with You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. Firstly, the title is sick, beautiful. I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I can't wait to hear what this is going to be about, okay? And, um,. I finished it because I, 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 one thing that a Quake Amazi will do is write a, a book. Do you understand? They will write because they write well and they write impeccably well. And this book didn't fall short of that. It was written very well. But my goodness, the unlikable characters. The main character, Faye, uh uh. No, 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 ma'am. Mm mm. The destructive, self-sabotaging behavior, all because she has gone through, she, she lost her husband. And I understand, okay, for a brief period of time. But this, not everybody becomes self-sabotaging and self-destructive. She did that. And um, she's just so unlikable. She's so self-absorbed. And... What upset me the most is the love story that a Quake Maisie was trying to build here. Okay? With her falling in love with the man that she liked. You know, and, and she got on with, oh, poor Nasir. You know, the man that she liked, she got on with her, not her falling in love with this man's father, child. I, I just, 
No. No. I, I, I can't. It's not the love story that I like to see in romances. It's not something that I condone or feel like it's something it's okay for me personally it's not it's not okay i can't be liking my partner now and then suddenly meeting his father and then falling in love with his father way 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 so i <laughs> Faye was just so unlikable i felt like if anybody could get a book from this book is joy joy i wanted to know more about joy and i wanted to know more about her story and her relationships joy is faye's best friend and she seemed like she was so cool faye on the other hand was intolerable for me i just could not and i rated it a one no i rated it a two out of five and it was really hard for me to rate it that low uh, because it is a quake amazing but to be honest no ma'am no ma'am Mm -mm. No, no, no. Actually, even thinking about it just upsets me. So no, 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 ma'am. Now, we move on to the <laughs> the stars of the show, okay? Now we move on to the stars of the show. I rented and raved about this book, and I gave it a five stars, and I reviewed it on Goodreads, and I reviewed it on my Instagram, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Pilar. This follows nine women. So it's nine short stories. It's a collection. It's an anthology, collection of short stories that are amazing. It follows nine women who have their relationships, who have their sordid affairs, the things that happen behind closed doors. But these are church women. These are women who go to church. <clears throat> these are women who are, you know, who, who grew up a certain way, but live different lives behind closed doors. And it exposes us to their lives and, and how not everything is black and white, the grayness of it all, but the power of love and the power of just choosing yourself and your identity and owning it. Oh, oh, this book was amazing and I highly recommend you pick this up. This is there at the bookstores. I've been seeing it. It's there and yeah, it wasn't the cheapest. I think I got it for around 300 odd, but I'm telling you, this is not a book that I would ever, ever ever borrow someone i would buy it for them yes but this book is never leaving my house not a chance i love it that much in fact i'm actually thinking of rereading it oh my gosh how to make love to a physician no uh, uh, not a physician what is it uh a scientist to a physicist oh my gosh that short story my my darling Woo! And then, of course, Piranesi. This is one that I loved, and I talked about it. It's not the easiest to read, but it's so good. In this book, we follow Piranesi, who lives in this house, right? But it's not like a normal house, you know? It opens up, Piranesi is in this house that is huge. It's got corridors and vestibules, and it's just confusing. And Piranesi, for as long as he can remember, has lived in this space. And the only other person that is in the space who joins him every other, every Tuesday or something like that, is someone he calls the other. He doesn't know who the other is, he just knows that he meets up with the other every Tuesday or once a week and he shares some things with the other and they chat and they have conversations. And the other is this guy who's put together and always in a suit and always looking great. But there's certain things to Piranesi, Piranesi, that are not making sense, right? And the, the discovery of you know him connecting two and two and connecting the dots was amazing to read and to witness and you cannot help but absolutely love piranesi you really can't help but love him um and and this the uh, man i highlighted and i annotated so many parts of this book and I loved it. I loved it. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Another one that I couldn't stop ranting and raving about is On Earth We Were Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. And 
spoke about it so much. It's basically one would like to say fiction and non-fiction because he does share some of his life in this book and then other parts of it are um, made up which are I don't know you know there's something about reading a book from a poet a book that is written by a poet it's just amazing it's written so well in this one we follow ocean wong growing up the relationship that he has with his mother so basically this the the book centers around him writing a letter to his mother who actually cannot read but in this letter he recounts and recalls some of the things that have happened and you know his sexuality his identity the, the boy that he fell in love with uh, the relationship that he had with his mother they're really difficult subjects that are tackled in this year book but it is written like a masterpiece i don't know if you're happy ma I never asked. Yo, la, 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 la. Mm -hmm. The cruelest walls are made of glass, Ma. He's talking to his mother. I've had many names. Little dog was what Lan called me. What made a woman who named herself and her daughter after flowers to call her grandson a dog? A woman who watches for her own? That's who. I, I, uh, just get it just get it just just get it just get it what made me fall in love with black love is shane and genevieve okay shane and eve oh my gosh this is seven days in june absolutely love this novel i also have another one of tia williams's novels this is by tia williams and in this story it's a love story but i don't think I would like to call it a romance. I would like to call it a love story. But it also has very, very strong, come out the book, poignant subjects that are discussed in this here book. And let me tell you, honey, okay? Let me tell you, it's done so well. It's executed so well. We follow Eve and Shane, okay? Shane and Eve are authors and they write books. And in their books, they sort of write to each other because in a previous life, when they were younger, they knew each other. They drifted apart over the years, but in a previous life, they knew each other when they were younger and they spent seven memorable days in June together when they were in high school. And they spent it in someone's house. <laughs> but it's so good. It's so good. This book brings me so much joy because it not only expresses black love so beautifully, but it doesn't take away from the struggles that a lot of us face, especially in black love, right? The trauma, the struggles that your partner has maybe gone through growing up outside of you and you the struggles that you go through growing up outside of you but how they execute it and how they heal together no smut very well executed love scenes and there's probably like maybe at most four it's not the whole book that is made out of love scenes everything else the relationship that jean Vieve has with her daughter is it audrey i don't remember I don't remember but my goodness so good so good and how they write to each other shane is this acclaimed author and eve writes um these vampire stories series and all of that series wow series and all of that and my just get it this book for 79 bucks i got this book for 79 bucks at bargain books you really don't have any excuse Next, these are the latest, these are the last two. Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So you guys know I've been trying to get into, um, what is this? What, what's this? What's this? I've been trying to get into fantasy. And my goodness, I really did enjoy this one. Um, this one was gifted to me by Jonathan Ball Publishers. And I loved it. In this one, we follow Xinyin. And Xinyin grows up with her mother she loses her father at a very young age but she grows up in in you know she, her mother is ousted from the celestial kingdom and she's ousted because she drank 
an elixir. She stole the elixir of immortality. So the mother becomes an immortal, right? Fine. Cool. 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 But Xing Yin grows up not understanding why they have been ousted from the celestial kingdom. And then she starts realizing that she's got powers, chat. Yep. She's got serious, serious, like there's things that she can do. And, um, but then eventually the, the king finds out that something is up with Xin Ying's mom. There's something she's not telling her. And Xin Ying has been kept secret. And the mother decides to send her away so that the king never has to find out that she exists. And then it goes on and on and on. And there's dragons and there's just, it's just wonderful. And there's a beautiful love story triangle thing. <coughs> and I, <clears throat> it's a beautiful love story triangle thing. And I don't even want to lie. Like I had a soft spot for the bad guy. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I had a soft spot for the bad guy. But it's really, really, really good. Definitely rated this one a five star. Couldn't put it down. And then the love of my life. Especially in the last, eh, eh, what? Two months of the year. This is the love of my life. This is a dowry of blood by S.T. Gibson. Firstly, cover, please. Exactly. Exactly. This, oh, man. In this book, we follow, this is a horror novel. So if you're not a horror uh, reader, maybe not for you, but I highly suggest you try it. It really isn't that bad. But there is a lot of trigger warnings for this one. Say sadomachism? What am I saying? There's a whole lot of triggers of, you know, rape, um, gaslighting, a narcissist, uh, violence towards women. Um, there's just a lot. There's a whole entire page that sadomachism, ma ma masochism. Am I missing something? Sadomasochism. Anyway, so in this one, we follow Constanta, who is writing letters to her lover, to her husband. She is writing letters to her husband. One thing we know about Constanta is that she has killed her husband. Yeah, she has killed him. And uh, we, we, don't, we don't know how and why, right? So Constanta grows up, this peasant girl, peasant girl, just living her life, just struggling with her family. And then she finds herself one day fighting for her life because there was a war happening and she's lying on the floor one day like, <laughs> right? And this man comes up to her and says, I can give you life. This man is Dracula. Okay? This man is Dracula. Okay? I can give you life, baby girl. And he gives her life, right? So he gives her immortality. Wonderful. Then she becomes the bride of Dracula. Even though they never say his name in the book. But we know there's Dracula. So, okay, sharp, grand. Then they live this wonderful life together. Great traveling the world money wealth parties eating people just beautiful okay and then <laughs> and then dracula decides nah bro i'm trying to bring in another wife okay i'm trying to bring in somebody starts gaslighting constantia starts constanta starts being mean starts doing really really strange things and brings in another lover okay and he says listen we 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 Listen, it's your sister. It's your sister. You are my wife. You are my everything. This is going to be your sister. I want you to love your sister as you love me. Hey, Dracula. Anyway, read this book. If you're really interested, read this book. Again, this one is one that, ah, oh, thanks. This one is one that I highlighted and I, who quite a lot. Quite a lot. Um... I mean, Constanta says, and God, how I adored you. It went beyond love, beyond devotion. I wanted to dash myself against your rocks like a wave, obliterate my old self and see what rose shining and new from the sea foam. What? What? Where, Constanta? Where? Teach me how to talk like you. 
Sure, you made it sound, this is when Dracula was uh, gaslighting and Constantia saw this. Dracula said, ours is a solitary existence. It would be good for you to have a friend, a sister. See? See? When the new wife was coming in. I have never forbidden you from taking lovers, Constanta. Remember that. And then she says, you made it sound like a gift. A gentle reminder of my own freedom. But I heard your double meaning. Do not deny me this. Yeah! Hello now. Just get the book, okay? That's all from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this version of some of my favorite books of the year and some of my mm, not so favorite books of the year. Quite disappointing. It'd be like that sometimes. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope 2023 brings you more reading. And if you do like reading, definitely read some more in 2023. I'll be there to read along with you. My book goal for 2023 is 45 books. I'm currently sitting on 40 books. And my goal for 2022 was 35 books. So I think I can do it. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for choosing me over and over again. Until the next video, I'm going to go. I'm going to film a very fun and exciting video now. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Okay?